Hi everyone, today I'm bringing to you a project from the popular book series, The Little Prince. We'll be drawing The Little Prince accompanied by a fox and the prince will be holding a rose in a glass jar. The emphasis in this video is on how to create depth and dimension, even if you're working with colored pencils or markers. It is not difficult to do. The trick is in creating layers and bringing in the depth by using lights with darks. Hope you enjoy. So the first things first, he's sitting on a chair. You have the fox and his, the little prince's legs kind of sticking out here. The fox's tail in the back. So keep your little prince right here in the middle of the whole thing. So the first thing that you're going to start with is you're going to make a slightly diagonal line just like this. This is the side of his face. So can everybody make the side of the face for the little prince? That's step one. Step two, I want you to touch the bottom of the line and bring down his cheek, just like this. But then you're going to stop right here. You're not going to close it. Inside the face, now you're going to give him two eyes. One eye, two eyes. And right next to the second eye is where you're going to make his ear and connect it to the chin. So next step, I'm not drawing his nose or his mouth because they don't make it in a dark color. They make it in a very light color. So I'm not going to be drawing any of that stuff. Instead, what I'm going to draw next is I'm going to be drawing his hair. So I'm going to use the marker for this. So let's see. On top of his eye here, you want to make a curved line with a second. So you're putting his hair in now. Then on top of his other eye, you're going to make one and two curves. You know, his hair is really, really curly and it's sort of everywhere. So that's the one thing you want to think about as you make the little prince. Now you come to the side of his face. So you can make one, in and out, in and out. Now you come next to his ear and you're going to touch the cheek and you're going to go one and two. So basically that's the side, this is the side and now we're going to make the hair over the top of his head right there. A little bit at a time, but we'll do it one step at a time. We won't do it all of a sudden. So get that part caught up. Now, do you remember the first line that you made? I want you to go above that. Leave a little gap and you're going to go up now. One, two, two little swooshes right there. From the side line that you made for her, the little princess face, you're going to go up and you're going to create two locks of hair over there. Now what do you do? Let's connect some of it together. They all look so broken up. You connect everything together now. So you're going to make a small line here to curve front. And then you're going to make another one right there. So this connects the front of his hair that's kind of all over the place in my opinion. Now for the back of the hair that comes all the way down, you don't have to worry about making these kind of locks. Instead, you're going to go in and out and in and out. So it's kind of like a wave. When you draw water, don't you guys make like a wave? If it feels, look at this. So when I made the wave, this one is not enough. So I can add some more. So that I can draw it like it shouldn't be so skinny here. It's nice over here on the top and the side. But how about the one above his ear? It looks like it's too skinny. So I add some more. Now, 
Now you're going to connect from the ear so that it joins. You're going to connect this line and this line up so everything is sort of connected nicely. Last step for making the hair, we still have to do a little bit more. So you're going to just add some of these curved lines inside his hair so that you look like it's really, it's not the kind of hair that it's nicely tied up in, you know, how sometimes moms will curl your hair or they'll comb it so that it's nice and all laid out. Well, it's he doesn't have his hair like that at all. So just inside of his hair, make a few, and then we'll move on to his scarf next. So you should get the feeling of curly hair. That's what you're looking for, curly, curly hair. Like mine. Like yours. <laughs> yeah. Give you a minute more and then we're moving on to creating the scarf next, please. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're not going to touch his face or anything. Instead, right from the middle of his chin here, I'm going to make one line and I'm going to make two lines and I'll close them. That's going to be his scarf, the one that's wrapped around his neck. Now, we made the scarf, but you can't have the face detached. So from the back of his neck, you're going to put in two lines that bring his face to the scarf, like this. Now, next step, keep your finger on the scarf. Look at me. Wait, uh, some of you are still drawing. I'm going to wait for a minute. Catch up and then we'll draw together. Okay, eyes on the computer, look at me. So what, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have you put your finger on the neck, right here. You're going to slide yourself down a little bit where his hand should be. I want you to put a dot right there. So with your finger, slide yourself down, that's where your hand is going to be for the little prince. What are you gonna do with this dot? You'll make his arm and his hand. So you're going to go back a little bit, not a lot, and then you're going to go up. Then you're going to come down, back to the dot, and make a line going down this time. Now I need you to watch the computer before you draw, so eyes up. This time when you take the line around, you want to be like this. So you're not making a proper elbow, it's just a curved line. He's holding a rose that's inside of a container. And so you're going to make his hand. So one, and two. Now look, the top line I did not connect because that's where you need to make his thumb. So don't completely shut it off. You're going to put his thumb in right here.
and we're going to now add his lines so add one line to break the two sides into half and then add another line between this and between this to make his fingers so that's the easiest way I know of how to draw things in terms of hands it's the easiest and you can just close up the tips with a curve So now what do you want? You need to have the glass case before you make the rose, not after. So you need, the size of the rose is controlled by the case, right? So right under his scarf, come back up again and put a top of the glass dome. Look at the gap I'm leaving from the scarf to the top of the dome. Sanvi, are you drawing this? Because I see you watching a lot. I hope you're drawing as well. Yes? Yeah? Okay. Make sure you are. So now you take this around and you're going to come around one, come around two. And as soon as you come around, now you'll straighten that line one. And you're going to straighten the line two. This far down. And what you will do is you will close it up one and two curve lines for the bottom of the jar, like this. We're going to finish drawing him completely and the fox and then the flower will be the last thing that we do. So coming back to this, from the neck, look at where you made the front of the neck. You're going to go under that and you will make yourself a straight line to the jar for the front of the neck for the little prince. Now I'm going to make a pretty long line and I need you all to be watching so that you get this right. So watch. You saw the way that you made the arm in the back here. So we're gonna go to our scarf. We're going to pull that line all the way around his arm and then come on the chair and then we're going to push out his feet. Like this. This is your long line. Bring your pen back to the hand right here and you're going to bring another line but watch what happens. As you come down, so it's narrow, becoming slightly bigger and this line stays a little higher than the other one so that you can close it with a curved line for his, the bottom of his pants. Next, shoes. So you're going to come almost to the top of the pant, short line here. So I did not start from the bottom. I went up a little bit higher. And from the edge of the pant, a diagonal line. So in the back short to the front diagonal and you connect to make a shoe. Going to his right leg, so you're going to just touch the bottom here. All you do is make a short line 
up one and then you follow the shape of your first line all the way back to his hand that's two. Oh my goodness and then go to the front same thing and then come back to the first foot so that makes it uh, Ariba Hey, Ariba, uh, is your mom there? I'm a little late, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, how do you want to do it? Because we've drawn this much. Is she good to catch up? Uh, uh, I, th I think so, I'm asking, just a minute. Yeah. Ariba, can you catch up from this uh, side? Yeah, I think she said she can. Okay. okay, then tell her to just keep going because I'm going... I'll keep moving forward and she can keep watching when I tell her to look at the computer so she knows how I did the different things, okay? Okay, I uh, come back. Before we say we're done with the little prince, let's finish his scarf at the top. Please, everyone, come to the middle here and you're going to go up, out, downward, and then out again. So don't make it a straight line. It's more interesting to draw things like fabric if it's got a lot of movement and this line change shows a lot of movement Miss Daisy Yeah Um I don't have rope You have what? I don't have rope No so don't uh, you don't have to worry about that just make it as much as you can and then don't worry about it okay let me see your picture. Suzanne, pick it up. A little bit closer to the camera, please, Suzanne. Okay. You should be okay, Suzanne. The neck is a little bit far behind. Just see. Draw as much as you are able to draw. Okay? Now come back to the beginning. Skinny line slowly becoming bigger as you get to the tip make it stop a little bit smaller so the top line is big longer and the lower line is shorter and connect with another curved line right there Okay, next step, come back to the scarf and make another short kind of an area like this. So the scarf splits into two parts. You know, if you have a scarf and you wrap it around your neck, you'll get two ends still. So when you draw scarves for anybody, you have to remember that. Next, bring it in smaller. Now we're moving on to his chair. Then comes the fox and then comes the rose. So we're going to draw the chair next. Can you please wait? Yep, I'm waiting.
Okay, can I go, Ria? Yes. All right. Eyes on the computer, everyone. So we're going to start with the bottom of the chair because I want to size where his feet are and where the chair is, right? So how do I do it? This is the bottom. I want you to leave it and just put a dot right here. Look at where I am. I'm not in the back. I'm under the bottom area. From here, I'm going to go ahead and make a line to his body. One. And I'm going to make a second line under his body and then I will close this. Two lines. Then from the same dot to the body again, I'm going to turn in. So this kind of makes the seat of the chair. You're going to make the back as well as the legs. Let's do the legs first. So look at the computer. Um, you'll notice in the picture, if this is the little prince's feet, they show the legs finishing right here in this part. So when I draw my legs, I'm not going to go as long as the feet, a little bit shorter. So what does that mean? It means I'm going to touch the corner here. Look at me first, don't draw, first watch. And I'm going to make one line. To notice that I didn't go all the way to the bottom. I stopped a little bit. I made two lines and the bottom I want to curve. These type of chairs used to be made, um, I believe it was in the 1970s, even 1960s. They were totally handmade, they were made from wood, and they used to round the feet off. Come back to the corner, go in a tiny bit, and you're going to make the other end of the chair. Again, I make my two lines, and then I curve the bottom. After you've done the bottom of his chair, your eyes should be looking at how high do I take the back of his chair. It's telling you, so as high as the rose case right here. So put your finger on here, slide yourself back, and you're going to put a dot right there. You will not touch his body. You have to be away from his body. So how are we going to make that line? Come back to the computer now, look up. So now touch this corner and you're going to take a straight line up to that dot, one. And you're going to go across and you're going to bring it down also when you touch the body here. That is going to be your back for the chair. And now the same, now this is important. Look at my uh, computer, this is really, really important, so I need you to watch. You can make a line on the back, you can make it anywhere, but that will not make sense. So do you see, remember this bottom line that you made on the back? You put your pencil against it, like which way did you draw it? You need to know that. Then you're gonna slide up like this, and you're going to make a similar line here. These two lines have to look like they match on the same chair. If you try to make this one the way you did and the other one different in the lining, it will not look right. And that completes our chair. We don't have to draw anything else for our chair because everything else is not visible to us. So we don't need to draw it. We're going to move on to our fox. So how do you draw your fox? You look at where the, how close he is to the prince, right? So you see the bottom of your flower container here. Put your finger there and right across from it, put a dot right here. 
We are going to start at the dot to create our fox. The, the face of the fox is the shape of a triangle, but it's sort of stretchy. So what do I mean? I want you to all, please put your pencils down and please look before you draw this because then I don't want you to feel you didn't know what you're doing. So from the dot, I'm going to go short line up, wait a minute, and then I'm going to come out. See how I'm curving from one to the other? And then from here to here, I'm just going to make that's what you need. Now draw this. Now, the fox has a nose, of course, so you put your nose right here on the tip. The fox has an eye. Under this corner here, down inside, you're just going to make a dot for his eye. That's it. Nothing too uh, flamboyant. The fox has two ears. They are going to touch the top here. Watch me first. Touch that dot again. Go back towards the flower case one. Leave some space and then make the second side two and then come back and make another line on the top. Every animal has a fold in their ear and this line, the last line represents that fold. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my color on him so that you know which part is what. This one. This is your face. Please don't be confused. That's your fox's face and that's the ear and that's the inside of the ear. So I hope this helps. Now, go up the first ear, look at me not from the same dot, a little bit higher, and you're going to go all the way up to the, as far as you can to the flower container. Come back to that dot and you're going to make like a rainbow curve all the way up as well. Now you're going to put one more line right here. So what is this line for? Only this part will be colored orange. Just watch, and you can do your coloring in a minute, but not right now. This, uh, because when I draw so many lines, I try to make sure that you understand which line is what. So that's your two ears, done. Now let's come and give our fox a little bit of, you know, fox's chins are not orange, they're white. So what you're going to do is look at the camera. So you're going to come in, watch me carefully. When I get under the eye, this is where I'm going to stop and I'm going to have a little bit of a fuzzy kind of a cheek. A fox is a furry animal. It is not a short fur, it's a nice fur. It's, uh, so when you make lines like that, it represents the fur. Just a few more lines to go for our fox, everyone. The first line, come back to the very first dot we made a little under and you're going to connect a line towards the bottom of the jar. Next, you're going to come to the hairy part on his cheek and you're going to add another line right here. Baby? Yeah. What are we doing today? This this picture is about the little prince. These are some books that they made for children. Have you ever seen that at a bookstore or a library? The little prince. We didn't see that. No. 
See if you can find it next time you go to a bookstore. Now, we have a little prince book at our house. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the fox's tail around the chair over here, everyone. So what you want to do is you want to, the fox's body curls and the tail comes out from under the chair. So there's going to be a line. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you make this line around the prince's chair right there. Now you're going to come from the chair's leg itself and you're going to cre create more hair. So this is your fox's tail that you just made. Now we're moving to the rows. I need everyone to finish what they've drawn so far. And we'll be moving to... Look at the camera, everyone. And you're going to be inside. Remember, the rose is here and then there's a stem. So the easiest way that I can show you is this. Look at the camera. So you put a dot and you make yourself a spiral like this. Now you won't touch the spiral. Instead, what you'll do is you'll make another line under it that goes up to the side like this. See, look at it. Look at how I left it open. I did not close it. Do you see that? And then I'm going to just put a little curved line under it. That's my rose. I don't have to make more than this. This is my little rose. And I can add to the rose a stem. And if you have room, you can add some leaves. And if you don't, you don't have to. So I need everybody to get this much done and then we're moving to our coloring. They always show the little prince sitting. I'm looking at the galaxy, the stars. So at the bottom of his feet, from the second foot, not the first, this is where I see my planet. He's like always sitting on a planet somewhere. I just don't understand how he can always be seeing all the stars in the world so easily. I don't get to see so many stars ever. It's generally just a dark sky. That I put a blue line because after this, if I wanted to do my galaxy, that would be in blue. And so I can use the color to the galaxy and it won't affect the planet. Remember to check your shades, right? So what that means is the little prince generally has light colored hair, but they show the dark when there's a little more shading. Now remember, if you don't have a certain color in your markers, but you have it in color pencils, yes? Yes, Sanvi? The what? Uh, you can get the book from Amazon, like your mom can order it from online also. It's not just Amazon, so you can get it from a few different options, okay? Just ask mom. Maybe she can look it up for you, okay? Okay. Start coloring, Sanvi. You need to start coloring now.
So I like to use a combination of color pencils as well as markers because it's not always possible to find the same shade in everything. So you really have to look and uh, apply. So for his face, I could not find the right color in my markers. I'm using a color pencil that I had in my box. It was a peach colored color pencil. So yeah, that works for me. And then they show a shadow. So on half of the prince's face, there's a shadow. You can easily use a gray color. If you have a gray color, either a marker or the pencil. These work really well to give you a shadow where you want to apply a shadow and it doesn't mess your bottom color up. Just turns that area a bit darker. Again, try to find yourself a light and a dark green. If, and if you don't see the right shade in your markers, look for it in your color pencils, please. So for example, I've got a total of three different shades that I'm going to use for my uh, little princess green suit. Remember, this is a glass case in which he's holding his rose. So that means you should be able to see the body and his suit in the background. So you would color it there, but not as dark, lighter. A lot of times if I'm coloring and I don't want to go outside the line, I put my finger right where I want the pencil to stop and I just color like I would normally color and my pencil when it hits my finger, it bounces back. So I keep a very clean line and it works well for me. So I always use this technique. If it helps you, you should try it because sometimes you 
we slow down a lot like a lot a lot just to kind of get a really clean line if you try it this way you may not need to slow down that much Brown? brown with some highlights so you can if you look carefully at the original picture can you see how you can find a like a brightness in the chair and some parts not everywhere so that's the part that i would ask you to find something it can be like a mix between like a brown and orange so that you can create like a um, reflection or a bright spot for your prints For whatever their reason, for the uh, tail on the fox, they've used at least three different shades, a brown, an orange, and even a yellow. So I'm just trying to see if I can get that done. Then from the very top, like near the chair. Yes. Done. Are you done? Really? Carter, that's really good coloring. You are very clean, very sharp. Excellent. Did you want to do... Don't forget the scarf, Carter. I haven't done the scarf. Did you forget it too? I don't want you to forget it. If you're done, awesome job, Carter. I really like your coloring. It is so clean and nice. Well done. You want to go ahead and hit the red button, get yourself a break. Thank you so much for joining us. Who said I'm done? Bye. Is that Victoria? Bye, Carter. Catch you soon. Victoria's done. Yeah. Here she is. Oh, my goodness. Victoria. Thank you for being so clean on your colors. I cannot believe how nicely you used your colors. They are so clean. I mean, they're just very, very sharp lines. I'm so proud of you. Well done, Victoria. You wanna take a break? Go ahead and hit the red button and off you go. Thank you, my dear.
Thank you for joining. Yeah. Uh, Ariva, well done. Ariva, just get a little bit more orange on his tail, sweetie, because it looks too light. Because think of how bright the face looks, right? So look at me. Look at the computer. I wanted to put in all my shades, but if I used a certain orange on the face, I got to have that orange in the tail too. Otherwise, it'll look like the tail belongs to a different fox. That would be terrible. Try that. So after you do that, you're good to go. Everything else you've done, uh, make sure you check your rose, that your rose has got all the colors that it needs. Don't forget to color your flower, everyone. 